Welcome to the Farm Stand Kitchen. My name is Rebecca, and today we're gonna to be making that delicious pecan pie pastry that I posted on the page. I just was teasing all you guys with that, so I thought, I better get this going. You guys are needing this recipe. This is a recipe that I just created. Um, that's the way I relax. I get in my kitchen and I just play around with things and create really great recipes. And speaking of great recipes, I just want to remind you that both of our cookbooks, the Farmstand Collection book and the recipes from then and now, this is our newest book. We also have a Dutch oven book. I don't have one up here. I'm gonna have to get one up here, Dave. Yeah. That's our outdoor cooking uh, cookbook. But all of our cookbooks can be found on our website, thefarmstandkitchen.com. That's all lowercase one word. I just wanna get that information to you because you'll send me lots of messages asking me how to get those popular cookbooks. So let's go ahead and get started. Let's talk about what we're doing here. So what I have here is the puff pastry. Now we're not gonna do braiding today like we usually do, how we always make our um, slashes on the side and we make the braids. I just decided to kind of do this ru rustic and just do something different. So I have, I'm gonna use both of these today because I guarantee you, you're gonna wanna make two so just use the package comes puff pastry. I use the Pepperidge Farm brand of puff pastry dough and it comes with two in the package. So I made this recipe to make two. If you wanna just make one, go ahead and just cut those ingredients in half and you can just make one. All right, so I have these rolled out just a little bit. I used my rolling pen and just rolled them out. This is parchment paper under here. So what I did is just kind of made them the width of this parchment paper. That's a good guide to go by. So just unfold them and roll them out just about this size, just like uh, Dave is showing you right here. Mm -hmm. Okay, let's talk about the filling. Now I guarantee you're gonna have all this stuff on hand. I made these simple, um, that's what we like to try to do. So what I have here, I have scratched this recipe down because um, I, like I say, I just did this by scratch. So I've decided on uh, one and a half cups of brown sugar, about one and a half to one and three quarters of light brown sugar. And to that, I'm going to add my one and a quarter cups of chopped pecans. And I'm gonna combine these together, just roughly here, because we're gonna add a little bit of cinnamon in here. So I'm gonna be adding Saigon cinnamon. I wanted to talk to you guys about this. I've been telling you a little bit about that we are getting spices. We're gonna be offering them on the website, thefarmstandkitchen.com. Um, we're starting with about four. I think we have four spices. Uh, one of them is Dave's Rib Rub. We're gonna be offering that. But I am going to offer the Saigon Cinnamon because it's my favorite and I use it a lot in our recipes. So it will come in a, in a little tin like this. We're putting all of our spices in tins. So for this recipe today, I wanna to use one teaspoon of the Saigon Cinnamon. So we're gonna go ahead and add that in. I have to tell you, I am a real sucker for pecan braids, aren't I, Dave? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> if, the, if we go somewhere and they're like, oh, they have a pecan braid, that's always what I get because I'm, I'm a little nutty. I like nuts and pastries and stuff. Good. I like the bear claws. You like bear claws. I know you do. Okay. All right. So I have five tablespoons of butter here. We're just going to roughly divide it between these two. So we're going to go ahead and put some butter down on our puff pastry. I'm definitely gonna make some of these for the Thanksgiving holiday. Something a little different and so easy to make because I'm a busy gal and I like to make the best of my time but still make delicious things. So I am going to add these to my Thanksgiving menu. All right, so you just want to get your butter on there. OK, 
Okay. All right. Now we're just going to divide this between the two. To, you know, you guys know I always say this don't knock yourself out. I mean, one has a little more, it'll just be more delicious. <laughs> okay, now we made these last night, or I made these, Dave tasted them, and we kind of uh, decided that today they were even better. We had a little sliver for breakfast this morning with our coffee, and Dave, he just loves these. Now this is a brand new recipe. I just created this, so this is not in our cookbooks, but we will save this recipe for the next cookbook. That's what I do. All of my newly created recipes, I just keep them in a folder, and when I get inspired to write another cookbook, they go in there. That's what our cookbooks are all about. All right. So there we have that. Now, I'm gonna have to turn this just a tad so I can get to work in here. So we're gonna roll this up, kind of like a cinnamon roll. And we'll just leave that seam side down. Let's go ahead and roll this one. so fun to work with the puff pastry you can you can be so creative with this dough I love that because it's you know already prepared for you and you can just get creative all right now what we're gonna do I'm gonna clear out just a little bit of this a little extra set in here okay I'm gonna set these right here Now put this up on my cookie sheet here. So actually this is a jelly roll pan. It's just a the half sheet. We use this for a lot. So I'm gonna put my parchment paper on here. I'll fold that under just a little bit because we don't need it that wide. Okay, now what we're gonna do, let's take this one and let's put it this way. And we're gonna work on this one first. So this is what I did. And I just stayed away just a little bit. I didn't start at the end here. I started about an inch in. And I'm just going to cut down through here a little ways. Okay, so it's gonna do this and that's perfectly fine. And then you just want to kind of twist this. Just like that. And then you just want to bring it into a circle. Just like that. And then I did take this end and kind of just pulled it a little bit and tucked it underneath. So then you have something that looks like this. It's kind of a twisted pastry. And then you want to just go ahead and cut on the top as well. Just like that. All right, let's get the other one over here and do it. And this just bakes up. I'm gonna show you the finish. We, we have an extra one there. So I'm gonna show you what it looks like when we get this done here. But I wanna show you guys the whole process because this is the way you have great success is when you watch the whole process. Okay, so we just kind of slice down through there just to expose those. And then you just want to twist it. Just 
And it's okay if this gets, you know, kind of messy and stuff on you. That's what you want. And then you just want to take both ends and spin it around. And just kind of tuck that underneath. And then we're going to slice the top as well. like that it's okay if you got this little brown sugar on here it's perfectly fine all right so what we have here we have one egg with oh probably about two tablespoons of water we just made an egg wash and we're going to go ahead and kind of seal these up a little bit this will also give you a nice golden color on your pastry very rustic this is just a very rustic pastry this is my favorite way to bake stuff. You just uh, get creative and make something great. All right, that's all you need there. All right, so there we go. And then what you need to do now is to pop this into a 350 oven and you're gonna bake it right about 30 minutes. Um, it's gonna be nice and golden brown and um, that's really all you have to do. I do have an icing for this, so we're going to talk about that as well. I'm going to bring the one we made down here so you can take a look at it. Okay, so Dave already ate the other one. No, yeah, there's a I little bit left, I isn't there, Dave? <laughs> no, um, we kind of uh, hammered it last night, that's for sure. All right, so I have my little pizza rocket here. That's the way I'm going to cut it. So let me tell you what I did for this. Um, icing here. As you can kind of see, mine has vanilla bean in it because I'm at the bottom of one of my homemade vanilla bottles and all those little vanilla beans set at the bottom. So that even made it even uh, better. I love it that the little vanilla beans are in there. So for two, for two of these, you want one and a half cups of powdered sugar, one teaspoon of your vanilla, and you want to just add milk till you get couple tablespoons till you just get so it looks like this so you can drizzle so when this comes out of the oven you just want this to get room temperature so when you do put your drizzle your icing on it's going to stay on there you want it to this is exactly the way you want to do it Wow, does that look terrific or what? I love that. I love pecans. This is my kind of thing. All right, now you can just cut this however you would like. I kind of cut ours in little uh, wedges is what we did last night. So you can just, you can cut it in squares. You can do whatever you would like. But I just kind of cut mine in. Let me cut it again here. Like I say, I use this pizza rocker for more than pizza. It works so good for stuff like this. All right, I'm gonna show you what this looks like on the inside. You have so many layers of that yummy brown sugar pecan, that Saigon cinnamon, all those delicious pecans. It's so good, it's so easy. There's nothing to it. And doesn't that look nice? Doesn't that look nice on your Thanksgiving table, on your dessert table? Yeah, or good. any day. You don't have to do it for the holidays. We would make a habit of making this every day, but it's a nice little indulgence. I want you guys to give this a try. This is our pecan pie pastry. <laughs>